It's a cool, airish day here in the mountains of southern Appalachia. It's been a while since I showed you around the garden. Most of our summer stuff's on the way out, of course. Most of it's already gone. What's left will soon be gone when we have our first hard frost. But I wanted to show you how some of the fall things that we planted are doing. This part of the garden that you can see is still looking really beautiful. It's the prettiest place. There's some, some stuff dying back but my nasturtiums and the um, comfrey there that's in the bag, look how huge they are. The nasturtiums have just come out of both sides of the bed. They've took up the middle walkway there under the trellis that Matt made for me and just beautiful, beautiful. The colder weather that we've had, the nasturtiums really, really love that. And they've just put out this new growth and new blooms and um, it's still just a really beautiful part of the garden. You can see the colas back there in the back, the burgundy. Just a really, really pretty area still. The first big heavy frost that comes, though, those nasturtiums, they'll just, it'll just be like shrunk. They'll just fall over limp. It'll just get them. We also have some pepper plants in this part, too, uh, with still some peppers on them. I've been waiting, been picking them when they get ripe and then waiting, I'm waiting for the, the news that the really hard frost is coming. We've had one frost, maybe even two, but it was really light. So it didn't, it like froze on the windshields of the car and on different little places around the house, but not, it didn't get the, the flowers or the vegetables that are still growing yet. The planters outside the greenhouse, again, this nasturtium is just really putting out new growth and the, the beautiful blooms. Also, the mint, the catnip that I cut back, I cut it back to the very bottom of the grow pot that it's in, and it's coming back out, as you can see, really beautiful. Frost will get it, too. The lantana that I got early this spring from the Satterfields Wonderful Nursery, it's still blooming, still very lovely. It was just the littlest, little tiny piece, and you can see how much it's grew over the summer. These are some really pretty marigolds that are still blooming. I got those from the Satterfields, too. You see that lovely. I really like that color. I didn't have as many of these as I did the kind of the yellow ones and then the orange and gold and yellow ones. These are really lovely, though. Hard to believe this is mid-October and I still have I still have little tomatoes growing. This is the little Matt's cherry Tommy toe. You can see here some that are still green, just beginning to turn. So we've still been enjoying just snacking on them really, not really harvesting them, but just snacking as we walk by. Back here by the greenhouse is where I planted a lot of our fall things and I really made a fatal mistake. I, I forget every year, as long as I've lived here, almost 30 years now, I just fail to remember about the sunshine. In the winter, we barely get any sunshine in this part of the yard, and it's already started. It stays shady most all day long. Uh, so I probably shouldn't have put most of my stuff here, but that's what I did. And the first growth that I had almost got, it totally got eat back by worms. I got attacked by this little worm, and then I, I got rid of those, and now it's beginning to come back out. You can see in this first one, this is kale, not many kales. As you can see, about five. There's a little tomato that's sprouted and coming back up. But it just, all the seed just didn't come up. That was all that come up. And the worms got it, eat it down, and now it's growing growing back out. So I'll just leave it to see, see how it does. We've not harvested any of it yet. In this grow bag, this is turnips, and you can see they're doing really good. I don't think any of them's actually made a bulb yet, but we could certainly be enjoying these um, greens if we wanted to. But they had been really decimated by the little worm, and so this is great that they're finally growing back out. And this one was some more kale, and as you can see, not much kale come up, actually. We've got some purslane coming up, too, but that was the only kale that sprouted in that one. This grow bag full of kale is much better, and we've eaten some of it, and it's still growing. You can see some, some new growth down in there, and then, of course, this is plenty big enough to eat already. And this one's more turnips, looking pretty good. And here's some beets. This is the beets. This is, uh, this year, all the beets I planted in the spring, I grew one beet. I think I planted about four rows and I grew one beet. 
So this is not many beets, but it's more than I managed to grow. And when I look down in there, I can see them beginning to develop their develop the, the root of them, which is what we'll eat. You can eat the beet leaves too. They're really tasty. But so those are looking pretty good. Makes me wish I'd planted more, but I only planted those because I was, I figured they wouldn't, I've never grown beets in the fall and I figured they wouldn't do any good, but there they are. This is a grow bag that we grew potatoes in. We've already harvested all the potatoes, but you can see we missed one because there's one growing. We'll just let it go and see if it actually develops into anything. So this is more nasturtiums that's in the edge of our tomato bed. The tomatoes are long gone, but you can see the bloom there. Beautiful bloom, still blooming. And look at the size of some of these leaves. Isn't that amazing? So pretty. Now, nasturtiums are edible, if you didn't know that. The flowers, the leaves, the stems, even the little seeds they produce, it's all edible. It has a spicy, spicy bite to it. Here's an example of some of the seeds. That's what they look like. So they're really easy to, to harvest and eat or to harvest and save till next year. That's what they look like, the little seeds. This, in our green stalks, we have strawberries. And this one, this summer, has done really good. We didn't have very many strawberries off of it. This is our newest green stalk of strawberries. Hopefully, next year will be the year. But you can see what's happened is, uh, over the course of the summer, the little tendrils have grew down and they're growing in now. These are bags that we had potatoes in, and they've completely, the strawberries have completely took over these two grow bags. This is our green onions we've got planted right here. We've been eating on them, so a lot of them are already gone, um, but they'll continue to grow and we'll continue to eat them. Look at that beautiful butterfly. It's a little chilly for you today, butterfly. This funny looking plant is kale that we planted way back in the spring. You can see how tall it's got, but we've just been cutting off of it and eating. And if kale is like lettuce, it will do that. If you can just trim the leaves and let the stem or the let it keep growing from the ground up. A lot of people do their onions like that too. Uh, green onions that is. Anyway, so that's why it kind of looks funny, but it's still definitely edible and still looking pretty good, especially with this cooler weather that we've had. I'm always surprised when I walk around the garden. I had not noticed right here. Look, look, I have two buds on my rose. This is a rose um, that was sent to us in honor of Miss Cindy. And I figured it'd be next year before we saw its beautiful blooms, but I don't know, unless a really heavy frost comes, maybe I'll get to see it this year. I did not know it was budded out like that. These three little rows right here, we had planted kohlrabi and also radishes. You can see there's nothing there, really. I think there's about four kohlrabi coming up. That may actually be radishes. I think it's kohlrabi, though. But we have been so dry. That's why the seeds did not germinate down here. It's been so dry. And Matt and I did water them several times, but they just didn't. They just couldn't, couldn't beat out that dry weather. So these are pretty much a total loss, these four three little rows that we planted, but I'm just gonna leave them. And you never know, sometime in the winter, something might sprout up and I might be surprised. This is a little piece of dill. I was surprised by it when I saw it the other evening. I planted it way back in, in the summer and just thought it never did come up. But again, it just took it a long time. The frost will get it. I probably should cut this back and take it in and either cook with it or, or hang it up to dry and just put it in the cabinet but I was surprised to see it too. I've really enjoyed this group of Xenas right here. Really pretty colors, just beautiful. I planted Xenas here very early in the summer and a big rain come and totally washed them away. And I come back and replanted them further back again, where it wouldn't happen again. I got away from the trench the rain had made and planted them again. So they're much, much later than I wanted them to be. You know, I was hoping this color would be here in the summer months, but now that it's this time of the year, I'm really kind of excited that they're here. And I think, well, maybe that big rain wasn't so bad after all, even though I was really disappointed at the time. This is our herb bed that we made, some of one of our herb beds. So in this one, this is Feverfew. It's the first time I've ever seen it bloom. I've ever managed to grow it and, and let it bloom, beautiful. We've got some self-heal, some stinging nettle that I won't touch down there, and then some valerian. We've grown valerian for years, but it all got decimated when we had the work done uh, last winter. So this didn't bloom this year, but I'm sure that it will next year. And it just has a lovely, lovely scent and a pretty flower. So we'll be excited about that for next year. This is some 
turnips that we planted. May have been too late to plant them, but we went ahead and planted them. So they're coming up in this bed. You can see some, two rows of them. I don't know if they'll make or not, but at least they're coming up. That may be something they kind of get stunted with the cold weather and then they sprout back out next spring. We actually have a zucchini still growing here. It's mighty small though, and it's been that way for a week or so. Actually, there's two, there's one right there. I've just been leaving them in the hopes that they'd get a little bit bigger, but the first frost, of course, will get this plant too. Took us all summer to grow these because the first ones we grew just didn't even, I mean, they just were so pitiful. It's the worst squash and zucchinis I think we've ever had. Also got turnips in this bed. You can see some of them growing there. These were also damaged by the worms, but they seem to be doing better than the others in the back. And I know why, it's because they've got more sunshine. Like I said, I just forget about, forget about how dark it gets in the backyard, but at least I'm gonna have these turnips to eat. Makes me wanna pull one up right now and eat it. In this bed, we have mustard greens on one end and then rutabagas on this end. I don't know if they'll actually produce anything, but we've never managed to grow them, but this is the furthest we've ever got along. So maybe hopefully one or two of them will at least produce the root that we can eat. These are our Mississippi pink eyes and I thought I'd got them all, but I see a, a whole bunch right here. So I need to head back up here with a basket and, and harvest the last ones. They probably won't put out anymore. I don't see no blooms or anything like that. So this is probably the last of the peas, but we really, really like them. And a lot of people ask us if they taste like black-eyed peas. They don't, they're a sweeter pea, but they're so similar to the zipper, red zipper peas or red hull peas that I can't really tell any difference whatsoever in the taste. So that's, that's more of what they taste like. Purple hull peas, you hear them called that too. I wonder if it's the same plant and people just call them something different. I'm not sure about that, but they all taste pretty similar to me. And this one grows though, the Mississippi pink eye as a bush, as a bush pea, as a bush pea. We still got a few butter beans up here too. And I've been letting them grow just so they could get really full. But if I hear about a hard frost, I may have to go ahead and pull them off. I do see some blooms up there though. I don't know how much longer the plant will be blooming, but there's at least a few blooms still, still coming out. I hope you enjoyed walking around the fall garden with me. One thing I forgot to show you is just behind me, you can see some more zenas. 
There's also some nasturtiums there and even a black-eyed Susan vine. This is Katie's little bed that she made towards the, I guess it was about in the middle of the summer. And she planted all of her things and I thought, I, I don't know if you get to see them bloom this year, but she sure did. That was another surprise. Seems like our fall garden has been full of surprises this year. Uh, I even found another one on my way. This is from the summer, uh, but I, somehow I just guess I'd left it laying in one of the raised beds. It's just an onion, so I'll add it to the ones on the porch. We've eaten most of them, but this will be, be one more for us to eat. The biggest surprise of our fall garden, though, is that it's even here. Now, we've planted a fall garden for many years, usually nothing more than turnips and kale. Uh, maybe some radishes or maybe some lettuce, but usually turnips and kale make up the biggest majority of what we would plant during the fall. This is the first time, as I mentioned, I've ever planted beets. Anyway, and it does good, and the good thing about both kale and turnips is that they will they can stand the cold weather. So often we'll have kale and maybe some turnips all the way till it's almost time to start thinking about planting next year's garden, you know, till early spring at least. But last year, everything we planted planted all those things. Everything we planted got mowed down by deer in one night. It was just gone. All my, all the stuff, all of it. Everything that we'd planted was just gone. Just eat down to the ground, just gone. I was so upset about it. Uh, we shared in a video, Matt brought in one of his cameras and put it in our yard and sure enough, it was does and you could see them, see them nibbling on everything, trying to see what they'd left behind. So I was really, really worried this summer about our garden. We've never had deer in our garden before even though they surround us. And they didn't bother anything all summer. And then I thought, well, they're gonna wait till fall. That's what's gonna happen. They're gonna wait till fall. But so far, they've not bothered anything this fall. Now, tonight might be the night they may come back, but so far, so good this year. So that's one surprise in itself. That's the thing about gardening though. It's such a rewarding thing and it's so beautiful and, and just so heartwarming to grow your own food if you're able to do that. To grow a plant, even if it's just a flower or something, and take care of it, it just somehow really speaks to your soul, really enriches your life. But it's wonderful, too, as a gardener that you see so, simil so many similarities between gardening and life. I mean, I know you've seen them. You've read books. You've read little memes or whatever about it. There's just, they're too numerous to even think about to put down on paper. But there's so similar, so many similarities to growing a garden and life. Um, and I would say like the surprises I found today, like this little onion and the, the rose budded rose up there and uh, maybe one or two other things. Those are, again, it's just kind of symbolic to life. That's how life is. We go along and things are um, maybe just going at a, the same even keel all across and then all of a sudden something happens that surprises us. And it's wonderful when it's a good something that surprises you. Of course, sometimes those surprises can can knock you, knock you back a, a notch or two, but it's wonderful when it's a really great surprise, like finding the onion uh, today or seeing the buds on the rose. So I hope you enjoyed seeing how our fall garden is doing. I hope if you're growing a fall garden, you'll leave a comment and let me know how it's doing. And as always, I hope you'll drop back by often to help me celebrate Appalachia, which as you know, if you watch our videos, is a whole lot about making a garden.